here in Huntington Beach as well. Smedins it is with the serve for Latvia to get this best of three sets bronze medal match underway. Spain have their side out through Gavira. What do we think the keys to this match are? Well, having, having seen how they both played in the semi-finals, what we know about Spain, they're a very patient outfit. They're not going to panic. They will just keep sticking at what they do, and they'll stick in there. For Samoylovs and Smedins, their blocking has been exceptional, and Smedins' serving has been very good. So you're kind of thinking about where they're going to cancel each other out and where, where those advantages are going to come. And I guess for you as a coach, and having seen these guys and probably had to scout them on occasion, where would you see perhaps the winning team coming from? Well, I would think it would have to start there, like you mentioned, the service pressure. Both of these teams, by today's standards, undersized. All four players, we're going to see no one shorter than six foot seven in the men's final. Uh, so these guys at all about six four, six five in that neighborhood are smallish guys, all wonderful ball control. And so getting them out of their system, out of their comfort zone offensively is going to be a tall task. And I think the team most able to do that is going to be successful. What we did see with uh, Latvia and Yanis Smith in particular, he got his serving going really well at the beginning of the of the match. If he gets that kind of a run here, it could be the one thing that separates the two teams. That one going slightly long from Herrera. You get a split second at this level on the jump serves coming to make your mind up whether that's going to be in or out. Fantastic, what a start. The south side, the side nearest to us as we take another look at that serve, has been the better side to serve from, has it not, Clayton? It just it seems the ball is, is being brought down that little bit earlier and the, and the jump serves are able to go after it a little bit harder as a result, put more into it. Smedin's giving that one another thump. But well dealt with, and that's the beauty of these teams at this level. You can be under pressure from the serve, but if you can get it into play somewhere, generally your partner's putting it back into a spot where you can then do something with it. And that's exactly what Herrera's done with that to find the line. Yeah, you make a good point. Even if Pablo Herrera, in this instance, passes the ball perfectly, there's such a high rate of spin on it off of his arms that it's not an easy ball to set. So there's a lot of advantages as we see Adrian come up with a, an ace down the middle. Improving the point. This end is a good end for serving on the jump serve. Rivera will go again. That's an excellent pass. Massive swing. They're making it look like an indoor game. And I can tell you, for us mere mortals, just walking on this stuff's difficult enough. I hit my own knees into one another on my way up here, Clayton. Good leave. Looking for a, a touch in the block. Herrera saying there was a touch. And Samoylov's being very sporting and saying, I didn't touch it, I was nowhere near it. Replay will tell us. Well, he's right, it was just a clash of hands. And these guys, four great guys, very sportsmanlike, as Alex misses that serve wide. I think the greatest show of sportsmanship I've seen out here on the beach is my guys, Gibb and Crab, were playing Simon and Alvaro the other day. Simon was calling his own touches on the block. Several instances, none of the referees had the touch. He called it, and therefore we got the point. That is true sporting spirit to be able to do that in what is a high-pressure environment, in a professional environment as well, to do that. That's, that's exceptional. It's certainly something that has in the past been just attributed to the likes of golf, where you know you call your own fouls, you call, you call those things. And it's generally, as we see that lovely put away again, generally held you know, in other sports, it's up to the referees, up to the line judges to, to spot it. And if they don't, it doesn't, it doesn't happen. But that's excellent for, uh, for that to happen.
It's it's unbelievable. It's it's unnecessary, quite frankly. Uh, I have a tremendous amount of respect for Simon doing that, and I hated every second of it because it swung all the karma to their side, and ultimately we lost the match. <laughs> Smedin's looking for another ripping serve. He certainly got that, but well left by Herrera. So end change, teams change ends, multiples of seven points. There are no easy wins out here. I think every match we've seen, with the exception of maybe that second set in the women's bronze medal match, has been tight all the way down to the wire. Considering these are the, the last matches of a, a grueling week of volleyball, the level is exceptionally high. Line block signaled by Smedins. Almost worked. One thing we're seeing with, with Yanis Smedins is the line block was called and he's going to sit in the cross and he's sitting and waiting. He's not guessing, he's not suddenly shooting off anywhere. He's looking and waiting to see what's happening and then making his move. I remember hearing Eric Fanoi Moana, gold medalist from the USA in 2000, the 2000 Olympic Games, talking about the idea that defensively on the beach, if you have the mindset that you're going to prepare for everything, oftentimes you end up getting nothing. So Giannis, as you mentioned, doing a great job sitting in that angle and being patient as he gets the trigger. The stats now have him down for two aces. And Demi Lovato highlighting that for us. Well, so we're talking about defensively and, and where you position yourself. You can go and stand in the middle of the court and wait, but you've still got two places to go. So even so, you've still got just as much work to do left or right. What we're seeing with Yanis Smedins is if he's on the cross-court defense, he's sitting quite away cross, and only he's now got one place to go, and that's to run the line. Nice work. One of the ways I like to think about it here as we take a look at this nice swing from Giannis across his body, is as a defender, you want to take your area and you want to clean up any offensive mistake from the other side. If they hit a perfect shot, kudos to them, we'll move on. But you've got to be in a position to where you can clean up the mistakes. So into the technical timeout, just one point separating the teams. But talking about the mindsets as well as a defender, you've got a big blocker in front of you who goes up and he gets a touch, but it takes it away from where you were defending. You have to accept that and not let that get to you as a defender. Don't you? Absolutely. Especially if you have a, a big, big blocker. If that's a big part of your blocking defense game, I, I'm not sure that's quite the situation with either of these teams as we talked about. They're quote unquote undersized by today's standards. So they're doing a lot of kind of uh, work in synchronicity with one another. Some fakes, some show and takes, that kind of stuff. The cat and mouse stuff we've talked about. So if you get those touches that take away a dig, yeah, I, I agree with you. It's it's part of the game. You just got to accept it and move on. You put yourself, it's a bit like a, a, I like to sometimes say, it's a bit like a, a pro golfer putting a good roll on his putt or her putt. I put a good roll on it just lit down. Right. I did everything right, but right. it just didn't quite happen. And as a defender, if you have that, okay, we're in the right position, we've done everything right, it just didn't happen, fine, move on to the next one. We saw that a bit in the women's bronze medal match, right? We talked about it on the block. You can make the right move and still not be successful oftentimes. You just trust that if you keep doing the right things, good things will happen on your side of the net. Well, this was a good serve that uh, had Latvia in a little bit of trouble. That was until the Lion King went up and got that one off the block. Even off the net, he stayed aggressive there, which is key. Smedin's now with the serve. That's just caught the sideline. 
Nice. That's the beach volleyball acknowledgement that it was in when you kicked sand over the ball mark. Kavira now for Spain. Well, it worked last time for Samoylovs, coming inside and going back to the line. That time, not so good. Didn't get a, a high contact on the ball. Looked like that set might have died just a little before he expected it to. Well, some improvisation on both sides, and it's Latvia who come up with the point. Sometimes we say on that play, Adrian was too there. He was so there, he got it kind of high in the chest and couldn't control it. Good high contact from Gavira as he goes off the block in a way. All square as this set ticks along nicely. Certainly if you're a neutral, not so much perhaps if you're supporting either one of these teams. You talked earlier about teams' demeanor during timeouts and such. I like to watch these four guys in particular for their on-court demeanor. They never look rattled. They never look hurried. Good dig. Oh, quick arm. That was brilliant. It, it was as if he was going to open up for the swing and then said, no, I'll go quickly. It's so impressive to watch him just load his legs up and spring out of the sand. No forward approach to speak of there, but Giannis able to just elevate and slap that down the middle. That might well stay in play. Oh, that was unlucky. Just as it got high above the bleachers, above the stadium, you could just see it suddenly got taken by the wind. And then Samoylovs was having to adjust his position. Discretion, the better part of Valor there, too, I think, as the, the signage there, less than forgiving, should you run into it. Technology is advanced in so many ways, in positive ways, but for the players with these boardings, not so positive. You don't want to run into them at all. We need some version of the uh, bouncy house that we've got on the outside courts. Good work from Samoylovs. He's still the target of uh, Spain's affectionate, as uh, you might want to call it at the moment. They're going after him, and he's responding well. Nice little look at the variety that the Latvians can hit you with there, too, as Giannis goes up for the jump set, shoots it out to Samoylovs for the kill down the line. Just out of Smedin's reach. Smedin's has seen it and kind of went and checked slightly. Looked like maybe he second guessed himself there ever so slightly. Just a great variety of shots on display and all four players showing their huge skill level in being able to find spaces to put the ball away. On a court that is eight metres by eight metres, it used to be, I say used to be, it used to be the same size as the indoor court, nine metres by nine metres. And then actually the shots part of the game was, was pretty much very prevalent. The idea was to make it a little bit smaller, make the teams really go at each other, make it more dynamic, more spectacular. And it's certainly done that, and the players have, have developed as a result of that. They? Their skill levels have seemed to have gone up in relation to that to match it. And as you've already mentioned, uh, Rich, previously, you know, yeah, these guys aren't tall, they're very skillful, but the average height of the players on tour has gone up, but their skill level is the same as these guys. So for these guys to beat the big guys, they have to play some super volleyball as we're witnessing. Great height. 
What do you do if you're a blocker at the net? We've seen Giannis from that exact position, jump set the ball out to Samoylovs on the pin. This time he uncorks it himself. Good dig. And a good read. Chance now for Latvia. But it's just too tight. Well watched. And it's a good mindset to get into, you know, I, I'm not going to feel perfectly on any given day. I'm not going to play perfectly, but I still expect to go out there and be able to win. Do I need every th star to align in order for me to win? Because if I do, I'm not going to win very often. That's an excellent piece of advice. And that's what separates the great from the, the also rounds and why these teams have got to where they get, particularly this week in Huntington Beach, getting on with it, playing, and Latvia doing just that. Would have felt hard done by, they called a timeout. But they've made their own luck with that play, and Smedins puts it down. The karma gods leveling it out a little bit as that ball just hops softly off the net into the arms of Samoylov. Good work from Herrera. 
Set point saved. One side out required for Latvia. Clever oh, play from Spain. They'll be going out to Samoilovs the whole set. We saw this a little bit in the semi-final, didn't we? The Latvians had a little bit of a lead and then a couple of late errors from Smedens. Leveled the set as it's done here. Two clear points required now for either side to take this opening set. Oh, would you believe it? It looks for all the world as if Samoa's had a chance to actually have a swing on that ball with no block. And he's rolled it way long. Really nicely timed pull off the net from Adrian Gavira on that one. Unbelievable end to this set. Spain facing set point have turned it around to take the set from under Latvia's nose. They lead 1-0. Clayton, I'm shocked. I think all the Latvian fans are shocked. I think all the Spanish fans are shocked because that was all of Latvia's unforced errors came in those last four points. Literally, the margin between victory and defeat in that set was three centimeters. That first swing from Janusz Smith, three, four centimeters wide, and the two successive hitting errors that followed gave the set to Spain. And well done from Pablo and Adrian to stay in it. Some spectator fun now happening. It's Mark Shim and the on court announcer. Gets them to play some fun kind of games to win some cool prizes, no doubt. Do we go back to that missed call from the referee, which would have had the score be, I believe, 2016 instead of 1917? And then you could go back. And, and I guess that's a really interesting point because you then brought up the point about the psychologist saying, do we have to be that bad that the referees have to be with us? Latvia did the right thing. They called a timeout off the back of that right. to try and they were in the lead. They called the timeout. OK, we can compose that. We can we, I can let that go. But you're right. From the way they then came back on court, it appeared that they didn't let it go. Well, they got that break as the, the tough pass just kind of landed softly off the net onto their side, so they quickly sided out. But now that the set's gone against them, does that linger in their mind? There's kind of these psychological layers, right? It's easy to forget if you come out victorious in the set anyways, but when you make a couple hitting mistakes, and then you start to rewind in your mind, hey, we would have been up 2016, which for sure we don't lose at that point. Uh, you, you know, does that change things psychologically for the Latvians, and how do they respond here in set two? We're going to find out how they respond very shortly. If you look at the stats from that first set, and just looking at the hitting errors, hitting out four hitting errors, three of them in those last uh, four points from uh, Latvia. So. You know, it's not about the amount, it's about when you make them as well. That, that can be the big difference. Basically, the only difference there, the two-point difference, was the four hitting errors versus the two from Spain. Second set underway. Latvia with the serve. Spain leading one set to nothing. Kibira has a look and then buries that one into the sand for the opening point. One thing you have to wait, talking about the psychology, if it's a rookie team and that happens and it's the first time they've been to this stage, you could well say, oh, yeah, that could really affect them. But these guys have been here and done it so many times and had those similar situations. You'd want to think that that shouldn't be an issue. You would want to think that, yes. <laughs> and I, I think that compared to younger, less experienced teams, it, it probably is less of an issue. But the reality is that no matter how much experience you have, you can still get adversely affected by things, I think. Hopefully, Alex and Giannis are able to snap out of it a little more quickly than a less experienced pair, but we'll see. Oh 
nice put away from Samoylovs. Just going back to that slide, is that something that you're looking to deal with with, uh, with Taylor and, uh, and your team? With you obviously got the experience of Gibb and with uh, playing there with Crab. As we look at this one again, that's a really good put away from him. And you know, there's a lack of experience there in, in that side with, with the team that you have. Uh, very true. Uh, Taylor's been playing the sport a long time, but not at the highest, highest of levels like Jake Gibb has been. Uh, there's also kind of another layer of experience uh, in that they're a new partnership together. So experience together means a lot, I think, on court as well. Uh, but we do have the advantage of Taylor Crabb being from Hawaii, and I think we both know Islanders are about as cool and collected as they come. <laughs> Talking of collective experience, these two teams have been together. Certainly, Herrera and Guevara have been together for what seems like forever as, as a team. And they you know, they know each other inside out and their game inside out. Nothing seems to phase them. And they, they're a team that certainly accept, all right, it's not working, it's not working. Similarly, with uh, Samoylovs and Smedins having come together, not been together as long as the, the uh, Spanish pair, but another team that work well together, understand each other's game. And what we have seen, despite the fact that they made all those errors in the first set, not once did, was there any kind of what you do. Yeah. Just get on and just play. As we look at this one, again, it's that ability sometimes to make things right. There was a chance, but unfortunately, the net getting in the way. So Latvia doing all the things they need to after losing that first set. They're up by one in the second, and that's very close. Good leave from Herrera. Smedden's certainly going for that sideline over and over, and I think we talked about it early in this match. Service pressure is going to be huge here, and they're going to have to continue to go for those sidelines and middle balls. Chance for Smed is well taken. Good up by Samoylovs as well. That was a really good pickup from Gavira. If anything, the roll was just perhaps a little too high from Smedins, which gave Gavira the time to chase it down. But a great play from Latvia in the first instance, but it's Spain who take the point. There's one of those instances where Samoylovs leaves that ball a little bit too far off the net. He's not quite as aggressive as he needs to be to get his partner into hitting position. And Smedins just has to... Oops. Rare setting mistake from Samoylovs there. It looked, I mean, from, from where we are, as if that ball had a lot of moisture on it, actually. Now, part of the job and the excellent job that's being done by the, the volunteers here and the, uh, the person is to make sure the balls that as they come around are cleaned and it just maybe that actually some sweat on the palms or on the arms of Smedin has caused that issue, but Latvia get on with it. Although, saying that, unforced error from Samoylovs. Been given as out. Just like Smedins that. and Herrera having a little conversation about whether that was touched through the net there. Just getting a little bit frustrating at the moment for Latvia. Simonov's just taking a deep breath, trying to reset himself. A serve from Gavira. We've seen that a few times. Brilliant serve. That's been the serve of choice from both sides. Right on that south side of the of the court. Right up the middle. Just gets a little bit of help from the wind. Latvia calling the timeout. They're one set down. They trail by four in this bronze medal match. How do Latvia recover here? It's a very good question. I guess from your point of view as a coach, you'll be you'll be knowing what you'd like to say to them right now about how to get back into it. But the coaches have no part in this. It's up to the players to recognize what they need to do, figure out, well, is it something we're doing wrong? Is it something that we need to change? Or actually, is it we just had a couple of off points and we carry on doing what we're doing? They'll know in themselves what it is, but there's just been that little bit of frustration, and Samoylovs has been showing that visually, actually, his frustration that things aren't quite going the way he wants them. So looking at them now, if they, it looks to me like they just need to relax a little bit and just get back in, find their rhythm. 
One of the concepts we talk about is kind of intelligent aggression. Meaning if I'm going to make mistakes, if today's an off day for me, I want to sort of go down swinging in a way. I want to make mistakes from an aggressive posture rather than being tentative, kind of backing off the throttle a little bit. And I think sometimes if I do that, things start to click a little bit for me, hopefully, and I get in a good groove. Any coach, particularly when you talk to indoor volleyball as well, will always accept an aggressive mistake as opposed to trying not to make one and then making it. And that's a really good point. Although at the moment it still looks as if Samoylov's a little bit tense as it, that last serve of his didn't find its mark. There's still plenty of time or points left in this set for them to get back into it. And that'll do his confidence the world of good as he has a little roar. Yeah, that's what we need to see out of Samoylov, right? Jumping high, swinging hard and roaring in celebration, right? That's when he's playing his best. Cross-court block signaled by Samoylovs against both Herrera and Givera. Little change-up. Smedins has been in that corner and then going around Herrera into Givera. That time he went straight and just ran out of room. Nice play. We got a touch, but just off the fingertips just out of the reach of Pablo Pereira at that time. Kind of trimmed his fingernails a little bit. Good serve. A chance here for Latvia, well taken by Smedins, and that's he's one of the players that nobody likes to go after because he's got that range of shots. It's always a little bit awkward to try and read a left-hander. The majority, the huge majority of players out here are right-handed, so the lefties have a little bit of that advantage. And then, of course, you add in Smedins' court vision and wide range of shots, and he's just a nightmare to deal with. That was unlucky. Smedins held his ground saw it perhaps didn't go quickly enough we've mentioned that earlier on he's been in the right places and it's a little bit like the matrix where you have to tell yourself run for the ball run almost got it that was a great look at how adrian just takes a look at the defense on his approach into the ball chops off a crisp line shot Smedins gets the line roll, and so Latvia have the point. One thing you'll notice, those of you perhaps new to the game you're watching, is the attackers generally, as they go in to attack the ball, will take their eye off the ball, have a quick look through the net to establish where the block and the defence is, and then reconnect with the ball to make their mind up about what they're going to do. Just giving them that extra bit of information. Great serve from Smedins. And a little bit of a change-up from him. He's gone to the other side of the court with that one. Yes, indeed. We talked about adaptability earlier, right? You mentioned how he kind of ran out of real estate when he was serving from the other corner, switched it up a little bit, cracked that one into the wind, let the wind help him kill it right down the middle. Into the technical timeout, Latvia one behind. But off the back of that ace serve, we'll certainly be feeling better about the way things are going at the moment. Absolutely. Just a couple minutes ago, it looked like Spain was firmly in control. But the Latvians are charging. The Lion King is roaring. Smedens is fist pumping. It doesn't matter the level at which you play your volleyball, whether it's the first time or you're playing here or playing in the gold medal match to come or playing as you have done in an Olympic final. Serving is so, so important. If you can't serve tough, you can't, well, if you can't get the ball over, you can't score, for starters. If you can't put the team under pressure and break down what they're going to do, you're going to make it really difficult for yourself. And as Sveddins has just proven, an ace serve, brilliant, is put the team his team back in the game, the other team under pressure. That looked close as it caught it. The line judge says no. Osvaldo Sumville's going to go down and have a look. 
Let's see if we can see that on the replay. It looked like it might have caught a piece of the line. That ball mark looks pretty clearly out. But did it hit rope on the way by? Looks like Pablo is resigned to the fact that it was out already ready to receive serve again. Not helped by the fact he didn't get any top spin on this one. And yeah. indeed, the sand splash that caught the line, not the ball. That's a great swing just right up the middle from Pablo Herrera there. It kind of misses the blocker and misses the defender perfectly. Threading the eye of a needle. Right up the tunnel of malcontent. What was it? In that corridor of uncertainty. <laughs> corridor of uncertainty. Good up. Chance here for Spain to extend their lead. Clever. And that's really good. It just shows the level at which Spain are operating at, that in the middle of that rally, it could have been so easy then, having made the dig to go at this one, hammer and tong. No, takes a look, sees where the defender is, calm roll to the space. I like how Gavira approaches hard in, an, in a position where he can hit the ball and then softens up. If you go the other way around, you leave yourself with few options. Smedins works the block that time. You'd say, as a coach to player, every time you go in, you go in with full arm, full arm swing, full jump, and then decide what you want to do. Right. Nice look there again from Gavira in the cross court. Yeah, like you said, you got to approach to hit because you can shoot from that posture, but you can't approach to shoot and then hit. to Smedins, but it's gone actually to Samoilov's line block coming. And that's gone off of Spain in a way. So Samoilov's getting the block out. Always a tricky one, this close to being an illegal attack with the hand open, but being deemed that it was indeed a legal play as opposed to an illegal play. A lot of pressure on the referees to determine what constitutes simultaneous. Well, that was a close one. Didn't look like it caught the block. Smoilovs knew it had hit him, so played it back over, not trying to test the referee. And as it is, the free ball dispatched by Spain. Yeah, you could kind of see that sideways spin on the ball as it hit off the defender there from Lavia, so they knew they had to shovel it back over. The FIVB have been testing the block, not counting as a touch. few events last season, the beginning of this season, where the block was uh, not part of the touch, so the team then had three touches after that. It's now gone back to as it was, the FIVB of evaluating those uh, events and will make a decision as to whether or not it will continue. As we look at this one once more, Samoilovs with the pass and then a clever roll over the top of the block. Having experienced that with the, what's the view been from the players generally as having the block not count as a touch? Yeah, I think the players are comfortable with this. Uh, going to the indoor type rules where the block doesn't count as a touch, I, I don't think many players are a fan of that. Just probably mostly because that's what they're accustomed to, is the way the rules are now. Uh, plus, I think, you know, this generates more rallies, more kind of sensational plays. Uh, with just two players out there, I think it's the way to go that the block does count as a touch. Black one. Back in the day, may well have been counted as a, a double, but, and certainly Herrera thinks so. Smedin's nose has got away with it, I think. And it's certainly one of those things in terms of rule changes that you can argue it both ways. In terms of the block touch, and the fact that with it not counting as a touch, that means now the defending team, having slowed the ball down, have a proper chance to attack. 
Nice work from Guevara. Spain keep their lead. Samoylovs going into the cross, but unable to stop the ball. He's taken that one to Spike Town. This is a warm-up hit for Guerrera and it for Herrera. Look at that, just brilliant. All arms straight through the ball. And Spain now are in the driving seat in this second set. Smedin's winning the gun show on that one. 16, 18. And he got the first touch and he into the block and it actually bobbles around a little bit. Gets one, comes up and then he just continues through and does well not to touch the net. Cross court block signal. Samoylovs with the serve. Nice pass that from Herrera, who's got lots of line. And those long arms. Of Herrera getting the job done. The lead remains at three. Spain are two points away from a place on the podium. Samoylovs with the error. He's tried so hard to put that away. And he vents his frustration. It's match point now for Spain. Herrera with the serve, going with the jump. Well, he's going for glory. Just about make the net. Three side out chances for Spain. Smedins with the serve. And they don't even need to have to pass the ball. An unforced error from Latvia. It's Spain who take bronze at Huntington Beach. They have beaten Latvia by two sets to nothing. It's been a while since Spain have been on the podium. They'll be absolutely delighted with their bronze medal here in the USA. Commiserations to Latvia.